Hi everybody. Just getting a little thing going here. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Okay. We did it. Cool. Oh, I actually might get a little bit smoother as I go along <laughs> setting this up. Oh, too funny. Okay. So, um, good morning, everyone. Just checking my other thing here and see if it will pop up. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Whoops. There we go. <laughs> we always have so much fun. Hey, Monique. Good morning. We have cucumbers today. <laughs> oh my gosh. These glasses are okay. That's better. Unless shiny, uh, but I can't see anything up there. Okay. Um, yeah, so, uh, so Monique gave me some ideas with the cucumbers because I have so many cucumbers. So, uh, we're going to do that. Mm -hmm. We're going to get going on, uh, we're going to dehydrate cucumbers today because I have so many. And, uh, hey, good morning, Jane. Nice to see you. Um, yeah, so we're going to, um, <laughs> we're going to, uh, do the cucumbers. I was just looking, something just fell, but it always does. It's like so exciting around here uh, with all of the uh, interesting energies. So, um, yeah, so I, I think I will use the, um, oh God, I don't know why I always want to call it a guillotine. <laughs> Maybe because it's so dangerous. It truly is. You don't want to use it without the guard. Um, you guys will remind me what it is, but anyways, um, mandolin, that's what it is, the mandolin. You want to be really careful with these things. Um, always, always, always use the finger guard, and so that's super important. And uh, I, if you're not familiar, um, they are super, super sharp and very dangerous. So having said that, if you use the finger guard and you go slow and you're careful, they save you a ton of time. You know, I do have a food processor, like an electric one, you know, but I don't know, kind of fancy, I guess. Um, but uh, I just find that it doesn't, you have to get this in straight so it won't tip on you. Um, yeah, I find that the food processor, it just kind of, it's like you turn it on and it just kind of overdoes things. To me, to me, you have less control. So, you know what, I'm going to cut the end off this because it's too pointy, it's not fitting in properly. You want to make sure it's fitting solid so I can just uh, put that in on its own. And not all um, vegetables are friendly with this thing. So you have to just kind of go slow and get a feel for it. And so this particular blade is just a straight, um, you know, straight cutting blade. It has a, uh, it has one that that actually looks like this. It has one that'll make little shreds. And I did this with the carrots. So I dehydrated carrots. Hey, good morning, Barb. <laughs> nice to see you. Uh, so I used this with the carrots and it made um, all the, like little tiny, tiny carrot sticks, like bigger than a shred, like bigger than a shredded carrot. And um, so that was good too. Um, so I, I chose the thicker, um, choice on this because if you turn it around it'll go thinner or it'll go thicker right to give your your width of uh, whatever the whatever it gives you so this is like looks like quarter inch and I'm just thinking because it's going to dehydrate and it's going to shrink down um, probably that would be okay because I don't want them too paper thin and so we're just going to do that and we're we're going to line them on the uh, dehydrator here and put some garlic I always love garlic, uh, so we're going to put some garlic powder, or no, it's not powder, it's um, granulated garlic, which I like better than the powder, and um, and then some uh, nutritional yeast, which is super good for you, has all kinds of vitamins, minerals, um, it's a, it is a really good um, quality protein too, the nutritional yeast, so, and it has that cheesy flavor. So the other thing, you know, I was thinking of, um, there are a few, um, great, really great seasonings from Epicure or whatever you want to do, right? You could put an onion powder on there. Um, 
you could make it like those flavored potato chips with like honey garlic or something like that. Um, so you can do pretty much anything. Or if you want to be super healthy, you could just do salt and pepper, which would be awesome too. So, hey, Terry. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Nice to see you on here. Um, yeah, it's, it's later back east. So, um, yeah, so that's what we're doing is just the little cucumbers and, uh, nice to see everybody on here. That's so great. It's interesting how, you know, some days just work for people better than others. And, um, you just never know. It's whatever people aren't busy. But, uh, so this week's been all about, um, preserving all of the vegetables and trying to, oh, it kind of broke. So, you know, I mean, with cucumbers, they're such funny things because, because of the seeds, right? And it depends on how mushy they get and how, how, uh, old you let them get. And I don't, I have no idea. I actually did these right from seed, you know, from seeds in my living room in the front window. And so I didn't know what kind of seeds they were uh, or what kind of cucumbers they were. I had no idea. Um, so I still don't know. They're the short, fat kind. <laughs> I would have liked to have longer, skinnier, pickling ones, but um, this is what I got. And I have quite a few, so I'm grateful for what I have. And everything is meant to be, so, um, so I'm supposed to have these kind of cucumbers in my life. And, uh, and for that, I am grateful. Okay, so we're just gonna stick these guys on here and um, I'll move this out of the way. Actually, you know what, I'll season them after. I'll season them after I finish the trays. So yeah, so we're gonna talk about a few other things um, today as well. Hey Darlene, hi, good morning, nice to see you. So we're doing the cucumbers and the cucumbers um, are, are a little more important than what you might think. They, uh, you know, I've never never been a super fan of them. You know, traditionally I like them not too often. <laughs> With a little bit of apple cider vinegar. And, um, you know, cucumbers just haven't really been my favorite thing ever. But having said that, you know, if you want to be healthy, you have to figure out how to work with the foods that are healthy for you. And, uh, and so I do, um, what I find is that if you, um, traditionally what I would do is a little bit of, um, um, apple cider vinegar and, um, and maple syrup. So a little maple syrup, you know, or even, um, if you were to mix it well, you could use just a tiny bit of coconut sugar because the coconut sugar has a lower glycemic index than other sugars. So, um, so I highly recommend the coconut sugar. It's, um, you know, way better, healthier choice than most sugars and, uh, or maple syrup, or if you're wanted to do honey, I find that too sweet. And I, and I do try and stay away from honey too much, you know, cause, uh, yeah, cause I, I think it's a good idea to, um, you know, to only use it, use it as a medicine. I like to use it as a medicine. So, um, yeah, so I would use a little bit of maple syrup and a little bit of um, apple cider vinegar just as a little salad. And so I'll do that with these little bits here that are a little too small to dehydrate. If I try and dehydrate those, they'll probably pretty much disappear. So, um, okay, so back to the reason that I convinced myself to eat cucumbers, even though they're not my favorite. Um, they've got potassium in them, like a banana. You could do a banana. They lower your blood pressure. Like, like they're very, um, um, I'm just trying to think of the, the um, I don't really know for sure, but I have a feeling that they work with electrolytes. Like I don't know that for sure, but I do know they work with your blood pressure, which is super important for pretty much everybody, especially in these stressful days. Um, you definitely want to be eating anything that will lower your blood pressure. And, um, and they're anti-inflammatory too. So, you know, so those are good reasons to eat your cucumbers. And, and we did, actually, you know, I have to say, we did four cucumber salads last week. And, uh, and those were really good. Like, they were really awesome. Um, 
mixing the cucumber with the, we did it, um, did we do it with mango? Did it with raspberries and pineapple, and I think we did it with mango and something else, and and uh, and they uh, that turned out really good actually. Um, that uh, it was gone, it was gone that night. All the salad, all the cucumber salads, both of them. Well, we did two each day, and um, so I did four four cucumber salads over two days, and they were all gone in two days. So it turned out really good. So mixing them with fruit is a really good idea too. And you can hear my fridge. I don't know if you guys can hear my fridge, but I don't know if it's the weather, but it's like every six months or so, it decides to um, make all kinds of noise. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what kind of energy got, gets in there, but every once in a while, it gets really noisy. And then, and then it scares you into thinking you need a new fridge, which you can't afford. And then I send it a little prayer, and then the... Um, and then the, uh, it quits doing its noise and it heals itself, which is awesome. Yeah, dried cucumber. Um, you know what? To be totally honest with you. Hey, Mona. Hi, good morning. To be totally honest with you, um, I hadn't heard of dried cucumber either, dehydrating cucumber. But Monique, who is here today, um, offered that suggestion. And I thought, hey, I'm going to try that, you know, because, um, you know, I mean, we do it with zucchini and stuff like that. So, um, so this is Monique's suggestion, and we're always open to trying anything. Yeah, you can try anything. Like I was saying last, I don't know, a week ago or whatever, I did carrots, and I used this little shredder, and, uh, and I dehydrated carrots. Um, last week, I also did, um, like, I, I did the carrots really tiny, like little tiny, uh, you know, those old shoestring potatoes, and, um, oh, the shoestring potatoes and um, so that was the size of the carrots because I want them for soup so I want them to um, I want them to uh, be small enough to like those little veggie flakes that you can buy to add to soup so I wanted the carrots that small and then I dehydrated a whole pile of red peppers that I got on sale you guys need to really watch for the sales because um, yeah because you can get like big bags of carrots 10 pounds of carrots for ten dollars um organic juicing carrots that save on and so i did my carrots from that and then the peppers were on sale so i dehydrated a whole tray like four trays of um red peppers you can i've never tried to dehydrate potatoes but i hear you can do it i did onions a couple weeks ago and um so um i should have taken more cucumbers out of the garden this morning that's that. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to add some apple to it, uh, seeing as how I have a bunch of apples. But I'm not going to add these apples because these are my um, apple cider vinegar apples. So I'm going to use these little transparents and put these in. So usually when you do apples, you will add... Um, and you can do this with the thing too, but it's really hard to do. And be careful. These things are like super, super dangerous. So yeah, don't do that. Don't do that. Do it, do it a different way. Cut your apples a different way. Um, but anyways, uh, typically with apples, I would um, just drop them in a little bit of lemon juice and water. And um, mm -hmm. Monique's dried potatoes. So yeah, so check in with her. Anyways, I usually put a little bit of lemon juice on this just so that they don't turn brown. But um, I don't have any here. My little, all my little things that we're gonna do today, so uh, so I'm not gonna worry about that. We'll just eat them right away. But they will, um, yeah, they will turn brown right away if you don't put them in a little bit of lemon juice, which is what I usually do, is drop them in a bit of lemon juice. Now, see, when we're putting this in the dehydrator too. It will probably um, take on a little bit of apple to the to the cucumber, which is super awesome flavor. So uh, so what I might do with this particular tray is um, not add the garlic because I think that the um, <laughs> I think the garlic and the apple might be kind of weird. But hey, we're into we're into experimenting here, and we do a lot of experimenting. That's what this is all about: is getting together and sharing ideas about healthy foods and um, 
sharing ideas about recipes. So it was super cool and awesome that Monique was uh, offering to uh, come up with this cool idea of doing the cucumbers, drying the cucumbers. So yeah, so that's what makes this so much fun because it's really, really interactive. Um, oh, that's interesting. Okay, so yeah, so I know that you can dry potatoes. I haven't done it, but Monique has, so you can check in with her and and it's so fun to share recipes together with everybody. You know, that's that's uh, such a cool thing that you guys want to hang out and do this. Okay, so since this tray has the apples, I am only going to put um, Celtic sea salt and pepper on this half. Okay, because I don't want them too, too, too strange. Although, you know, they're all going to be in the dehydrator and the garlic smell might go all over everything. And then we'll find out if it affects the um, apples or not. Okay, so a little bit of um, black pepper on that one. And then for these guys, I want to do the garlic, uh, the granulated garlic. So this is an organic granulated garlic. It's not garlic salt. It doesn't have any salt in it. And, um, so I am going to add the Celtic sea salt and the Celtic sea salt has more minerals than, um, than the, uh, well, obviously than any regular salt, but it has, it seems to have, I don't know if it's true or not, but it seems to have more minerals than the Himalayan sea salt because the Celtic sea salt to me has more of a, a really beautiful, uh, mild salt taste and it has so many minerals in it. And um, that's why you need quite a bit more. Whereas I find with the Celtic sea salt, uh, you need less and it's saltier. It's more of a salty, traditional salty flavor. I do use both, but, uh, and we're gonna add nutritional yeast. Nutritional yeast is um, really good source of your B vitamins. It has um, protein and it's really good for your immune system. It has all kinds of nutritional value and it has the cheesy flavor. So that's, that's the other reason. And so I am doing the one um, tray over the other just to catch the, the bits that fall through the cracks. I'm just gonna switch these around and see these guys did catch some of that uh, salt and pepper and, and nutritional yeast. And um, yeah, so the, the other thing with the nutritional yeast is it has, um, it does have potassium too, and it has some calcium in it. So super good to support your immune system. Like it's one of the top, oh, I can't remember, um, but you know, the Dr. Michael Greger that does the nutrition facts, his website is nutritionfacts.org and he does tons of research on foods and, um, he wrote the book, How Not to Die, and I, he's, he's kind of like my new favorite so far. And, uh, and he just says everyone should have a tablespoon of nutritional yeast every single day for optimum health. So, there you go. So that's why I use it so much. And, you know, I do try and stay away from the dairy to, um, too, so, uh, so it gives a nice cheesy flavor. So I will let you guys know how these turn out and that's going to be super awesome. So we have a few things um, that I want to bore you with. I still am working with these, these um, apples. That's what they are. They're apples. Uh, so I'm going to move this tray here and we're just going to talk while I make more. It's like I can't get anything done without you guys here hanging out. So let me see where I can put this. Okay. We love dropping things around here and spilling things and throwing things on the floor. <laughs> we, we seem to do a lot of that. <laughs> but I want a, I want a, um, a clean cutting board. So, so we're going to do that. I'll turn it over so it doesn't have the garlicky stuff on it. And, uh, and then I'll talk about this and, um, I'm actually going to go and rinse my hands off because I do not want any contamination between the, um, the garlicky cucumbers and the apple cider vinegar. And, um, 
what I might do, actually, I'm going to rinse off that big cutting board because I don't want the apples um, touching any of the, of the spilled, the spilled um, ingredients here, like the nutritional yeast, which is also called nooch, in case you guys didn't know. Okay, let me go rinse this off and wash my hands real quick. Okay, that's the easiest way to do that um, and then I'm going to scoot it's heavy this over here okay so um, one of the other things we can talk about is uh, oh yeah the the yeast does it really does it helps with um, it helps with gut, gut health um, oh my gosh um, you know, it's, it, it is kind of used as a probiotic. It does really work with the immune system. Um, it's not like kombucha or raw sauerkraut or anything, but it does really, um, it's, it's like a prebiotic, right? So it's going to promote and help. Um, but it, it's, as far as I know, it's not like, wouldn't replace a probiotic um, intense food like sauerkraut or anything fermented, which brings me to our beautiful, um, mango salsa we made this on um i don't know monday i think and uh so anyway we did salsa i did the salsa like your traditional peppers tomatoes onions garlic and um and then we added mangoes so what we're what we're doing is making as many things as possible fermented for that gut health and for the uh the gut biome and the uh, fermented um you know, because that has everything to do with everything, like the fermentation and the lactic acid facilitates, especially brain function. They've been studying it so much, how it affects the brain with Alzheimer's studies and autism studies and um, depression. And they find that people that eat fermented foods, um, it just, you know, brightens up your brain. Your immune system goes to the brain or your, it works with your immune system. And um, it's like the, the, um, benefits work with the brain and the nervous system so yeah so this turned out good and these are my new things oh yeah i forgot to show you my new toys um typically we've done we've done the ferments with like either a cloth over it or um or coffee filter or something like that so that it's because it's going to bubble right the yeast is going to bubble the lactic acid is going to create the bubbles and start to ferment so um, so we've worked with, uh, you can put a cloth over it with an elastic, you can put a coffee filter over it, you can put a paper towel over it, we've done that. And then I bought these things um, to show you guys, and it's the, uh, called the Perfect Pickler, and it has the little thing, it's kind of like a, um, a wine lock, I guess, or alcohol lock in it, and you put the water in and it, it allows the bubbles to come up, but nothing to get in and, um, and affect it. So. This thing's working pretty good, although I do find, um, I mean, you know, I don't know how tight I've got it in there. You just push it in with a little rubber ring. But these are the fermented pickles or fermented cucumbers we did last week. And I put um, turmeric and chili peppers and garlic in here. And, um, and so it is still getting that, uh, the little scoby that the ferments tend to get. So it has a nice little SCOBY on it, but I didn't think it would get a SCOBY with this airlock because it's not supposed to. But if I'll carefully put this here so that's clean. And so if you guys can see the little, there's like a little film on top, like a little SCOBY protecting. So the key to any ferments, of course, is to make sure your food is underneath the brine. It has to be under the brine or it will mold. So these um, little little cucumbers or pickles are underneath the brine. It has that little scoby there. And so what you do is you gently can remove that and grab the pickle, taste it. And if you think it's um, good, like the flavor is there, like I, I totally taste the garlic and the peppers. It's really spicy and hot and awesome. Um, so when you think it's done, which is anywhere, depending on the heat from um, three days to a week, you know, on the counter or wherever it's warm, uh, you know, room temperature warm, uh, then you can go ahead and remove this, put a regular lid on, put it in the fridge and it will stop the ferment and then it'll last like, you know, practically forever. So this one here, this is a new thing. 
There goes the fridge again. This, I wasn't sure if it was the dog. Um, this is a new thing, and it's like a little um, rubber nipple. And you can see it was puffed up. I don't know if you guys could see that, but it was puffed up from the fermenting, so it's like stretches up. But it has a little tiny hole in the top. And so that, um, I just got these yesterday, so, uh, so I'm not sure how that's going to work, if it's going to prevent the film. But you can see with the salsa, it's much, it's much harder, of course, to keep the salsa underneath the brine because it's not really a brine. We haven't added salt water to this. All we did was add our, um, our regular amount of salt. Put that back on carefully. Um, the uh, regular amount of salt, uh, for fermenting, it's usually one tablespoon per quart, right? Um, you know, I don't really want that much salt in my salsa, so I have watched this very carefully. I only have like a teaspoon in here. And um, and so I've really, really kept an eye on it and checked it and tasted it and stirred it and, and, you know, turned it upside down so the juice gets everywhere. So, uh, but it's been, uh, well, it's been four days. No, Thursday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So, um, so it's like bubbling just perfect and and what it does is it just brings out the flavor like i did a regular fermented salsa and oh my god but just outstanding beautiful crazy awesome flavor so that one's getting the same way so that one's about ready to go into the fridge too and then we did um the other day we did the pineapple pineapple's coming along can you guys see the bubbles here so we're making pineapple cider pineapple cider like a, instead of apple cider we're making pineapple cider and so that's the pineapple in there and it's cooking away with the little um uh you know sugar the raw sugar and stuff and so this is this is fermenting nice so the important thing is i do not have this uh, strange beautiful jar <laughs> and so um so i do not have an airlock or anything on this so it has to be burped because it would ferment and it could actually potentially ex explode, apparently. I've never had that happen, but I've heard that it can happen. Um, so I have been watching and just opening it up, let it burp and put it back on. Um, yeah, what I might do with these is, um, you know, throw the uh, coffee filter on with an elastic or something. Um, if I'm, if I'm, if it's not right in front of me and I'm apt to forget about it, I will definitely do that. So, and then we're doing the um, apple cider vinegar with the apples. You can see, I don't know if you can see the little bubbles keep floating up. And same thing, I burnt this. And then for the new people that are here that weren't here this week, um, to keep them under the water, I have, if you can see it, a little tiny shot glass. Um, yeah, I washed my hands and everything. So I'm just saying, I'm going to touch the apples next. So can I touch that? So I can touch that and and um, show you the little it's actually a little um, soft boiled egg thing uh, holder glass and so you know I was looking for something to just hold those apples down because if they stick up they can mold uh, yeah, I mean even if we're working with the vinegar vinegars tend to not mold like once the food soaked with vinegar it tends to even if it hits the surface it tends to not mold but you still don't want to take that chance it's better to keep it under the water and then here are our pineapple skins and the pineapple skins you can see the bubbles coming up um this is um this is going to be for cleaning like vinegar for cleaning or you could use it for um oh it just flew out of my head but it, not in this particular case but although you could but i like you can use a lot of fruits and things for hair rinse and for um uh, you know, facial tonics and different things like that, and just cleaners, like really nice smelling cleaners. So again, you know, you want to burp this, make sure um, these pineapples are in here so tight and it's a narrow lid that, that they're not going up to the, um, above the, the brine. So yeah, so that's that. So the part I was going to bore you with, because I can't, um, I just can't seem to get everything done. <laughs> with you guys and it's so much more fun and I need to get the rest of these apples into making apple cider vinegar so I will show you one again and bore you with that while we chat 
and we can talk about, once I start cutting apples, this is the Herb Robert. Where can I put it where you guys can see it? I can put it on the shrub. Then we can talk about the shrub. Okay, but I'm going to, um, I'm going to carry on with this because I need to get this done. Okay, so clean knife. Not going to contaminate the um, cucumber with the, with the apples. Um, so yeah, so basically you're just going to cut the apples up. And you can do this, honest to God, with any fruit. Um, with the apples, if you are using good apples and you're, um, you, like you're making a pie or you're doing whatever you're doing with the apples, you can just use apple peels and cores and the stems, like just throw them in there. Like if you had a really, if you had a nice apple and you were using it for other stuff. These particular apples, that one's not too bad, but they're really super blighty. Like they're, they're, and they're tiny and, and they would be really picky to, um, you know, to cut up and use for food in my mind. Anyway, I don't, I don't have the patience for that. So these guys are going in here. And, um, and then what you do typically, um, what you're going to do is you're going to, uh, add one quarter cup sugar to a quart of water. Okay. So for your, um, that's all you're going to do for your apple cider vinegar to start fermenting. So you do want to use a natural sugar, of course. Um, Although I have had people use white sugar and it's worked, but you know, to me, it's just not as, it's not, I mean, if you're going to try and have a super healthy vinegar that you're going to use for, you know, for food or for eating or for medicinal purposes, then, um, you know, you really wouldn't want to add white sugar to it. Although you can, in a pinch you can. So, uh, and it'll work. But anyway, I'm using a, um, a raw, you can use two different kinds. You can use, there's like the cane sugar that is um, lighter in color, and I'm not really sure why. And, uh, and that's what I did with this. I used the lighter one, and this has the darker one. So I am gonna use that apple. I need a lot of apple cider vinegar. So I'm, gonna, I'm making four of these gallons. And um, so you wanna just stuff it as, as much as you can and of course your apple cider vinegar is so good for digestion and um, you know just a way better choice for um, you know than even wine vinegar although hey let's do that that's a nice thing about being on here we come up with ideas let's try a wine vinegar although um, yeah, that, that would be good. That would be really good. That would be really awesome. So we can try that. Oh, oh, I remember now. I have distracted so easy. I'm supposed to be telling you about the Herb Robert. Herb Robert. It's the little, um, you guys know it. It's like the, it's also called the Crane's Bill Geranium, I think. Um, and it's super medicinal. So I can touch that and touch this. Uh, it is, um, as a tea, it removes... Um, well, and as a foot bath, you can use it in a foot bath too, like just simmer it and put it into a, a foot bath and, um, and use it for, uh, detoxing. It'll help to detox and, um, it's really good for, for detoxing the body and it's good for, um, oh my gosh, it's got the antiviral properties. It's got, it actually does have antibiotic properties. Um, it scavenges the free radicals uh, obviously so that means it's an antioxidant um, it clears all kinds of things up and it's still you know it, it's kind of on the tail end uh, for this time of year um, but uh, there's still lots of lots of life in the in the um, you know it's just starting to go back into the ground so uh, so you can still use it and it would be the leaves and the flowers that's typically used and you can use it um, as a tea and like I said as a foot bath to detox but as a tea it's really nice it's um it is really effective as an anti um, antioxidant so 
it's one of those things that helps with circulation too so you do if you're oops that one's not good i don't really want worms in my i don't know if there's a worm in there but i'm not going to take that chance i don't want worms in my apple cider vinegar although a little bit of protein never hurt anybody but um i'd rather not <laughs> where's the other part of that okay so um okay so back to the her robert um <clears throat> antioxidant qualities it's um if you were on blood thinner medication uh then you you might not want to drink much of it or you definitely wouldn't want to drink lots of it um, because it can assist with circulation right and any herbs um or even foods like peppers can um that assist with circulation can interfere right because they're helping with circulation so they can interfere with um if you're on blood thinning medication did i say blood thinning or blood pressure i meant blood thinning right because it aids in circulation so anything that aids in circulation generally opens up the blood vessels and gets the blood flowing better hey hi rita it's so nice to see everybody here so yeah so it would be things like cayenne as well like if you're gonna put cayenne into your um into your food that's fine it's just a sprinkle but if you were to do cayenne um medicinally like you know two to four capsules uh which is the the standard if you're using cayenne as a therapy um you don't want to be doing that if you're on on any kind of well probably blood pressure medication because that's often has a blood thinner in it too um, but especially you know specifically if you're on blood thinners you want to be careful of herbs that have um blood thinning properties and so uh yeah so the herb robert has some of that um you know it's if you were to um if you were just to have a cup of it like and just steep it as a tea just pour hot water over it and just have it as you know kind of a mild to medium uh tea then it's fine it's not going to do anything but you know you just wouldn't want to drink two or three cups a day and that's when it can um anything can work as a medicine if you do it two three times a day a uh, even a food can turn into a medicine good or bad right uh too much of anything um yeah so so any any herb or anything that's good for you can be overdone and specifically that one well it's just a little stem specifically that one um works in that way so just a mild cup of tea like you would anything you know a cup of chamomile or whatever uh would be just fine and it is a good idea to to you know maybe drink it a couple times a week um depending on what you're doing because it detoxes the heavy metals out of the body which is um you know we're so exposed to um everything you know the chemicals and the pollution in the air um all the things that we breathe like um i don't know pretty much everything um everything from you know i don't use fabric softener but things like laundry detergent and um you know cleaning supplies like some people are really really diligent in using all natural products which is awesome and that's the other reason for making all this apple cider vinegar um because why should you buy apple cider vinegar when you can make it but i ran out so we're making lots um but anyway so for uh any of the toxins and i i mean if you're eating anything store-bought at all you know there's going to be toxins and pesticides and things in that as well so the herb robert, robert is really good for that um it has um it has um i know it's good for the liver and i want to say that it has similar to dandelion but it it's not really it really doesn't work that way um and that's one of the things i wanted to talk to you guys about too was i was asked about uh dandelion and i have pretty much um switched <clears throat> completely to uh, dandelion instead of coffee and uh i don't know i mean i love coffee and it's an, a good organic coffee one cup a day is a good antioxidant and um 
I don't have any problem with that other than um, this part's really bruised. I You could probably use it, but I don't want, um, I think I want everybody the same consistency, right? So if something starts to break down faster than the rest, uh, it could hinder the balance. And that's just in my mind. I have no idea. I just, that's just intuitively coming to me. Most of the stuff we do here is um, my intuitive cooking, because I'm not a cook. I'm not a professional cook. I just make healthy, fast, 15-minute meals. And um, for us, and people have asked me to share what I do, as crazy as it is, because it's often very um, unusual and different, and we just have a lot of fun. But I do have a lot of 15-minute meals on my, um, on my YouTube channel. I have quite a few, a couple hundred, I think, now, of... Um, healthy 15 minute meals and um, information about herbs, tips about food. I've got, um, I have to say, I have a lot of pictures on my Instagram, which are, you know, pretty, pretty, I think, you know, I mean, I'm not a professional photographer at all either. I'm a professional herbalist and a, and a health consultant, but I'm not a cook or a, or a photographer. But anyway, you can check those out on georginaseer.com. Um, yeah, so I have too many apples. I need to be able to get that little shot glass in there so these guys can go somewhere else. And I should actually get that into the dehydrator pretty quick. And, um, okay, so I'll just show you the rest of this is very simple, super easy. Um, well, whatever. I'm just going to use this darker sugar here. So it's one cup of sugar. And you're just going to put that on top, and then you're going to um, fill it with water. And then uh, a couple times a day, turn it upside down, especially the first few days, to make sure that that sugar is right through the, um, right through, you know, mixed through, not just sitting in a lump on the bottom. And um, I had a big bag of, of organic sugar um, from Costco, which I really liked, but I... I not going to Costco. Haven't been to Costco in a long, 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 long time. So, uh, yeah, I'm just not comfortable with that at all right now. I've been really diligent. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Not paranoid, but diligent. Yeah, no, I've been, I've been, uh, I've been definitely adhering to the rules and, uh, yeah, I don't want to do anything that's going to make me sorry. So yeah, so you just kind of pour the water over it like that. This is a Santiva water system. And um, so it alkaline, it has, it alkalinizes the water. So it has, um, I don't know what kind of filter in it, but it does alkalinize the water. And so um, because we are exposed to so many chemicals and pesticides and things like that, <clears throat> um, we're, we're over acidized and anything, any acid environment, uh, is a good place for inflammation. So, um, yeah, so anything, when you have inflammation and pain, there's always an acid component in the body that is, um, helping to manifest that. So we want to have as much alkalinity in our foods and what we're drinking as much as possible to balance that out in the tissues. Like we're not talking blood, blood has, it maintains its own pH, but um, but in the tissues, if there's acid, an acid environment, there's usually inflammation and pain. So anyways, um, oh, where did I get my water pitcher and filters is, uh, there's a wonderful lady in Nanaimo, and, uh, she works at the Naturally Healthy Clinic and her name is Melanie with a Y, M-E-L-Y-N-E -E, Walker. And I will put her, um, I'll put her information on this thread and, uh, and it's really funny because it, I, it's so amazing how the internet works. I just looked at my laptop here and she's on there right now asking me a question. So anyway, yeah, it's a Santiva water system, not that expensive. Um, I have bought expensive, expensive units. And what I personally have found is, you know, you pay three grand and, and after, you know, five or eight years, um, you're cleaning and changing everything and back flushing and all that kind of stuff. But there's still a little, um, in the one I had anyway, I won't mention the brand. Um, 
uh, the little pipes are still, they're not really cleanable. I mean, you can flush them, but I don't know. I just got a little weirded out after a few years and I thought, oh, well, you know, I would rather have something that's cheaper that you can actually uh, replace for a while and then it's cheap enough to just buy a new one. So that's just my personal opinion. And um, I, and I really love the unit. It, like you can tell, you can tell the water is fantastic from it. So I really like that. Okay, so we will see you guys tomorrow morning at 11, and I'm just going to put a shot glass over this and close that down, and thank you for hanging out while I did yet another thing of apple cider vinegar. It's nice to have company when I do that, if you don't mind watching me do a few things over and over again. Okay, so um, thank you for coming and hanging out. We had a good time. We'll see you tomorrow morning at 11, and I will put the um, information on there. So share the videos, share my Instagram and my YouTube. Have a good day.